Thanks, Rob. Thanks, David. Hey, I know frustration level is running high over there. What are guys most pissed off about right now? Um, I think everything really, you know, um, this is a frustrating position to be in, especially with the potential we have as a team, you know, so obviously things just, you know, tend to not go our way and it is what it is. You know, I, I feel no sympathy for myself or anybody here. You know, we have to do our job and we have, we have to execute at, at a higher level. And it's very, it's, it's that simple. Denzel was just saying he's confident guys aren't checking out. Do you, do you feel like you guys are still united that, that everybody wants to get this fixed? 100%, 100%. Um, and, you know, I don't, I don't even like hearing that talk. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like we're all here for a reason for a purpose and it's up to us to figure it out. You know, no one got us here in this position besides ourselves and we're a team. But that being said, it, it, it falls on all of us, you know, not just one person or say, you know, we, you got like a leader, or X, Y, we're all a team and we all got to do this together. So I got no sympathy for us. You know, this, it is what it is. It, you know, we got to just work work our way out, out, out of this uh, hole. Thank you, Tom. Cam Justice is next. David, kind of off of that, I mean, is that a message that you're looking to spread to your teammates and trying to keep that locker room bought into playing meaningful football despite what your record might show? Absolutely. This is our job, you know, and um, I feel like obviously at times it hurts to keep pushing, you know, and to have things not go your way. Um, but at the same time, you know, that's life. It is what it is. Got to put your hard hat on and get back to work. And I wonder, have you been able to step up as like that vocal leader in a time like this? It seems like that message could be really useful to everybody, not just on offense, but defense and special teams. I'm whatever the team needs me to be, you know. Um, obviously, I've had my own personal adversity with, you know, this ankle injury. And, you know, like I said, it is what it is. Like no one, <laughs> no one cares about, how my ankle feels or how we feel, you know, on an emotional standpoint, like, it is what it is. Like there's no time for excuses, that there's no time to point fingers. We got to do what we got to do to turn this around. Thank you, Kim. Let's go to Scott Petrick. Hey, David, were you on a bit of a like snap limit yesterday in your first game back? I was, yes. And how difficult was it then to watch the guys in your room get opportunities in the end zone and not be able to take advantage? I mean, honestly speaking, um, I always praise my my teammates. You know what I'm saying? Like, I always uh, – I'm usually one of the people that, you know, push everyone's name out there to get opportunities. So I don't, I don't you know, feel bad for anything. You know, I feel like we're all professionals and we all can uh, do the job well. So um, – yeah, whoever gets the opportunities, they get it, and, you know, it is what it is. Thank you, Scott. Next up, Matt Fontana. Yeah, David, you're one of the guys that have been here the longest. You, you've been through the really tough times. Does this feel the same as some of those really hard years a couple years ago? I think every year is different. You know, uh, one year it's, it's this, and next year it's that, and I think it is what it is, man. It is what it is, and we have to just – work our way out of this situation. And you've mentioned it, Miles talked about it, to, to have that talent on offense, defense all around, then it's just not playing well. Uh, is that even more frustrating? You know, would it be almost be easier to say, yeah, we just don't have enough talent here and when really that's not the case? There is no excuses for anything. Um, I feel like exactly what I've been saying this whole uh, interview, there's no excuse for any shortcomings it's, it's we have to do our job it's that simple thank you matt jeff shadell has our next question hey david uh you talked a couple of times now about not living up to potential is there a lack of cohesiveness uh, between the players and the coaches because especially on the defensive side uh miles and grand Del, but kind of called out the coaches so do you think there's a lack of cohesiveness there? You said. 
I can't speak for, for the defense. I, I play on the offensive side, but the way I see it, at the end of the day, us as players, we are the ones out there on the field and we got to be the ones to handle the business. So I don't know what, what they um, said to you guys, uh, but I feel like we just, we it's up to us to figure this out. Thank you, Jeff. Mary Kay Cabot, go ahead. Uh, yeah, David, we were talking to Miles uh, yesterday. He was mentioning that, you know, there are a number of you guys that are in the prime of your career. And really, you know, you're one of those guys too, right, right along with Miles. How imperative is it? How important is it uh, for you guys to, uh, you know, not waste the prime of your careers when so many of you guys are just really, you know, Pro Bowl caliber players, really? I'm sorry, Mary, what, what was the question exactly? How important imperative is it for you guys not to waste these prime years of your careers when you and Miles and Denzel and Nick, all you guys are, uh, you know, in your Pro Bowl prime of your career? How important it is it for you guys to to right this ship as fast as possible and take advantage of you guys where you're at right now in your careers? It's the most important thing ever, really. I mean. Yeah, we, you know, sure, we're in our prime of our careers and everything, but at the end of the day, I feel like we're a team, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like that what the, the, the team needs the most is um, to come come back or, you know, come back, come come out of this hole that uh, we dug ourselves in because no one else dug it but us, you know what I'm saying? We, we play on Sundays, so we have to own whatever we, whatever mistakes we made and we have to pick up the pieces and get back to work. Thank you. Thanks, Mary Kay. Next up, Ashley Bastop. Hey, David. I mean, with the with some of the problems this year, it seems like very similar discussions each week in, in terms of what the problems are. I guess for you guys as players, like, do you feel like you know what to do to fix some of these issues and maybe you're just not doing it? Or do you feel like you, you don't know what to do and, and are looking for more direction? I guess, like, what what's maybe the root of, of these issues kind of keep popping up the same way? I mean, it's football, you know, um, anything can happen on any, any given su Sunday. So I feel like, I feel like it just comes down to execution, execution. If we execute the way that we know we can, we will never be upset. You know, I just feel like with the guys that we have here, it's just, we have too much talent to just say that it's, you know, anything else other than execution. So we just have to execute and we will. Um, don't get it twisted. We definitely will. So we're going to pick up the pieces and get back to work. Thank you. Thanks, Ashley. We'll take one more question for David, Mary Kay Cabot. Oh, yeah, David, with um, with Deshaun, you know, back on the practice field and getting ready to come back uh, after this next game. I mean, I guess what what are your feelings on the fact that you guys, you know, really weren't able to hand over a legitimate playoff contender to him? I mean, do you some, do you, you know, do you feel like you guys, you know, owe him anything for that? Or uh, just how do you feel about him coming back with maybe not too much to play for? I'm sorry, can you say that question one more time? Yeah, with Deshaun coming back, um, do you guys feel like, I mean, do you owe him an apology or something for not, you know, protecting this, this record and giving him something to play for and, and not being able to hand over a playoff contender to him. Um, Mary, can you, can you uh, answer me how many games we have left? Seven. Seven games left. Um, yeah, no, it's a lot of football to be played. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the way you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the way like your the tone was, it was like the season's over already and it's far from over. Um, we have fighters on this team, you know, and we're not just going to turn our backside for anybody. You know, it doesn't matter who it is. We, our main focus right now is the Buccaneers this week, and that's that's what it is. And next week is whoever we got next week, and it's just that simple. We're not <laughs> – I'll, I'll be damned to see, you know, anybody just be like, okay, well, that's it. Like, nah, like not not here, not right now. So um, this one hurts. This, this This game hurts. You know, we had – we had the potential to, to do what to win and we didn't. So obviously it hurts, but this season's far from over. We're, we're not, we're not just going to, you know, give up for, for anybody. So if that answers your question, um, 
Yeah.